Welcome back, my friends, to another episode of Ultimate Skyrim Season 2. Thank you for joining me here today, as always. Last we left off, what episode is this? 28? 29? Who knows at this point? Last we left off, we were trying to take down Valheim Towers and we were having some difficulty and also some weird bugginess. As it turns out, I found this out in between the last episode and this one. We weren't wearing any armor for some reason. Wraithen was straight up naked. I don't know how or why that happened, but it could explain why some of the damage we were taking was so severe. Um, also, if you remember, Ashes was not working properly. I've gotten all of this stuff fixed. I got Ashes working again, and I set up a little camp down over yonder at our fireplace, if you remember from the last episode. So our spawn point should be set there. We should be good to go. I also noticed that really I apologize for the sloppy gameplay in the last episode. We really have a lot of resources at our disposal here that I didn't make use of. So I'm planning to take on Valthai and we're going to give it a third try and let's see how it goes this time. So kind of what I'm thinking I'll do here. We have uh, some, I'll show you what resources I'm talking about. Now of course we have our crossbow that might be good for a couple of, what's a good way of putting it, introing shots into the encounter. But of course I don't want to engage from here because we're going to leave all those enemies to come and hit us with range damage on the way. So we've got some poisons that I'm gonna make use of. We've also got this very important summon spirit wolf spell, which actually we can't use now that I remember. Uh, mage armor we didn't cast in the last one, and also we didn't use our scroll of frost rune, which is gonna be very important. If you guys remember in the last episode, the main, main issue, the, the big problem, so to speak, is Elsie the Spiker. Elsie the Spiker is an extremely skilled bandit. She is the leader of this bandit cabal here at Valheim Towers. So if possible, I'm going to try and keep this frost rune for her. We also have Adrenaline Rush, which is our racial ability as a red guard that I'll have to be making use of. That will increase our... I can't remember if it's our damage output straight up, but it's definitely our attack speed. We can check right now. Adrenaline Rush, Red Guard's Adrenaline Rush increases stamina regeneration and allows us to act much faster than normal, renders immune to most, renders us immune is what that's supposed to say, to most paralysis effects in this time. That's not a particularly well worded effect. All right, so with all of that in mind, we're gonna go ahead and try on this encounter one more time. Oh, and another thing that we should do is cast our, not cast, sorry, get my Imperial Light Shield. Give myself, actually I'm gonna hold off. I'll use this decent potion of fortify health and maybe also wanna fortify stamina. But the rest I would like to save for the actual encounter. All right, how many bandits we got here? She's gonna come over and talk to me. I'm gonna get one hit straight out the gate. Oh, you didn't notice me kill that person. Three bandits. Talk for someone who's about to have their guts spilled. That's you. All right, so we got two right off the bat. Let's see who. Nice miss, Stenbar. You're fast, faster than I thought. All right, that'll do it. All right, let the stamina regenerate. Stenbar can take this guy on. No sweat. All right, so that's quite a few right off the bat. Much better than last time. Of course, we got to go ahead and see. Who else is? Oh, here we go. Oh, did someone get raised? All right, there we go. There's another kill. Let our stamina regenerate. Oh, here we go. Oh, take it easy. God, that still hurts so much. Luckily, our mage armor was... Can I go ahead and take some... Do I not have any magicka potions? I got fortify magicka, but that's not enough to get another... Um, what's it called? Spell off. I'm gonna best an orc right now. There we go, Stenbar, how you doing? Take it easy, my friend, come on back. This is a pretty good spot to engage them from. Because we've got, oh shit, nice block. They can't overwhelm us as easily here. That'll do it. Getting a lot of experience. Ow. There we go. And we're gonna take another potion. All right. And it seems like we're aggroing most of them, which is, hey, Senbar, might wanna, yeah, someone is there, my friend. There it is. Oh, baby. All right, now if we see Elsie, 
coming through there. Oh, there she is. All right. Well, it's time to get shit done, I suppose. Now we're going to go poison spider venom. And she's going to be our big target. Now the other thing here, restore health. Um, maybe a, a little teensy one, restore stamina. And we are also going to go ahead and apply our adrenaline rush. And if I can, I don't want to do it yet, but getting that frost rune casted would be real excellent. She's going straight towards me. Oh, look at that. It's like a straight up slow time effect. Oh, I knocked her down with bouncer. That is perfect. Oh, we are moving now. Oh, she's getting up. There we go. Oh. Here we are. Here we are. Come on, baby. Just us. You know what? Do we use the frost rune? If she turns her attention towards Stenvar. Oh, here we go. What a fun effect. Her defense is impeccable, I'm sure. Stenvar, you gotta get in there, my friend. Oh, and we're still taking arrows from somewhere. God, that hurts. Come on. Come on. Whoa. Oh. God damn it. We're stuck on the geometry. Here we go. Alright. She's healing. St fuck, she took out Stenvar. Alright, well, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna try and <laughs> use this here. Um, scroll of Frost Rune. Oh shit, that's not the right button. There it is! Oh, oh that was close, too. My god. <laughs> oh, the second I put my shield down, you could see that she saw the opening and went for it. Whew. Alright, well, job's not done yet. And that was a power attack coming in. Jesus. Oh, beautiful day. Well, Jesus. Wait, look at this place. Let's go ahead and finish off the rest of the bandits. Much better than the other time, I'd say. Did you hear something? I did. Someone's firing arrows at us from over yonder. Why is my stamina regenerating so slow? Yeah, there he is. I'd appreciate it if you stop. Oh, here we go. Oh, shit. Someone else. See, that's why you can't put your guard down. Ow, fucking god damn it. Oh, and we got a summoned wolf. I remember that person giving us trouble before. Sinvar, come on down this way. Yeah, please do. That fucking lightning. It's no joke. All these corpses. There we go. Thank you, Stenvar. I didn't want to fuck around. I gotta remove that mod that makes corpses uh, collidable. It's a cool concept, but in practice, a little problematic. Oop. Oop. Take your shot. Shoot your shot, baby. Are you out of ammo? He might be out of ammo. Looks like it. Man, I wonder if this bandit was not just, like, a coward waiting up here. We got another bandit. All right, we're clear on this side. We might actually be able to pick him off. One silver bolt. Don't want that. Steel, please. No, 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 no. Steel. Why isn't that switching? There we go. Where are you at? Here we go. Got one. Not bad. And it looks like Stenvar is... Oh, those are dwarven arrows, too. Those are not... No wonder it did so much damage. Ow! God damn, Stenvar. How did you let this guy pass? Whoop! Oh! Oh, shit. This guy's not messing around, either. Oh, you're mine now. Oh, sorry, buddy. Huh. Whoever was saying that Lost Knife is more difficult than Valheim, I'm afraid I have to humbly disagree. Is that everybody? Hey, Stenvar. How you doing? Maybe he was down. His health is low. Whew. All right, I'm going to take a breath. Let's go ahead and make sure this other tower is clear. What a view, right? 
Ooh, mama. God, Elsie. Anyone there? No one on my sneak detection meter? Nobody? I feel like they'd... We'd probably hear them. If there were more. And it appears that we are clear, everybody. Round of applause for our man Stenvar. Without whom, we probably could not have gotten that done. Wow. Raythan. So I like to think that canonically, this was not his first try. Like, he did get his ass whooped a little bit. So another humbling moment. Happy to escape with our lives. But hey, you know, I'm sure he's feeling real good because we've taken out some dangerous bandits who are hassling people crossing the road and so on and so forth. What the hell was that? You guys see that? What is that? Oh, there are rain splashes right here. And it rains on the end of a harrowing combat encounter. So Raythan feeling real good about this service that he's just rendered to the people, right? Let's go ahead and see how he feels in a moment. This is letters to Harold, everybody. We're reading this one for sure, just so you know. Lord us, 29th second seed, 4th era 201. Dear Harold, we're finally safe and I have a moment to write. The soldiers took everything in our farm. I don't even know which side they were on. They left us nothing, and I didn't like the way they were looking at Anya, so we had to go. I don't know when I'll get the chance to send this. We found some abandoned towers bridging the river near Whiterun, and we're settling here for the night. I think the trolls have lost our scent. I can hear them snuffling outside, but we've barricaded the door and they can't get in. Thela and Anya are well and send their love. Yours forever, Elsie. Remember, Elsie was the leader that we fought with the pole arm, or not the pole arm, sorry, the bow staff. Turdos, third mid-year, 4E201. Dear Harold, more refugees have come here. They're starving, but some of them have weapons, so we went out hunting. There are a few rabbits and some wolves that we avoided. A merchant passed through today. He had plenty of food, but he wouldn't even share a mouthful with us. I hope the trolls get him. Thela and Anya say they miss you. I hope I get a chance to send these letters so that you know where we are, then you can join us. Yours forever, Elsie. Sundas, 13th mid-year, 4E201. Dear Harold, we were hunting today. Thala was attacked by a wolf hidden in the long grass, and she's badly hurt. The wound is infected. We have nothing here, no medicines or anything. I'm so afraid. Anya is crying. She's scared too for all of us. There are eight of us here now, but we never have enough to eat, and the nights are cold. More merchants came by. The prices they charge are so high. I can't afford even a healing potion for Thala. I don't know what we're going to do. I think of you often. If I get a chance, I'll go to Whiterun and send these letters, but for now, I have to look after Thala. Yours forever, Elsie. Sundas, 20th mid-year, 4E201. Dear Harold, today I killed a man. It was one of the merchants coming past the road. His bag was full of medicines, and when I asked him, he showed me and laughed at me. When I begged him, he shoved me and laughed at me is what that's supposed to be, and laughed at me when I begged him to lower the price. Thala is dying. I told him that, and he laughed some more. The next thing I knew, I had knocked him off his horse. He fell, and I hit him again. I kept hitting him. I had no idea that a simple staff could do so much damage. The others, they didn't stop me. We've all had enough. We took his weapons and armor. We killed this horse and will feast tonight. It's good to have something in our cook pot for a change. I threw the body down the waterfall for the trolls. At least they're good for something. I feel awful about the man though. I didn't mean to kill him. RK, forgive me. I just snapped. I hope you'll forgive me too. Yours forever, Elsie. mid dos 23rd mid-year, 4E201. Dear Harold, more merchants came past today, but now we're armed and armored. We stopped them and made them hand over food and gold and some of the medicine. It's too late though. Thala died last night. We took her downstream 
so the trolls can't get her. I keep thinking about Whiterun. The merchants who came through told us that there's a bounty on our heads. They think we're bandits. I tried to tell them that we're just trying to survive, but the way they looked at us, it's hard to convince someone you've just robbed. We're not the only robbers around here either. One of the merchants swore at us and showed us his saddlebags. They were already empty. I need to look into that. Yours forever, Elsie. Teardos, 12th, excuse me, 12th Sun's Height, 4E201. Dear Harold, we're clearing the road so that the merchants can get through. The trolls have been scared of us ever since we went down there with torches. Even Hajvar, Iron Hand up at the White River Watch, is keeping his men up on the hill and taking his raiding party somewhere else, away from White Run and the road. It feels good to be doing something useful for the world for a change. I think a couple of the merchants understand. One of them paid us without us having to draw a blade. As long as we don't kill without need, and as long as the Civil War keeps going, maybe we can stay here. We're not charging so much, and everyone who passes here is safe. There are 16 of us now. You should see Anya in her armor. You would be so proud of her. She sends her love. Yours forever, Elsie. Freydas, 6th Last Seed, 4E201. Dear Harold, Anya is dead. A bounty hunter came in search of us. He was alone, but so was Anya. I'm never leaving any of my men by the door on their own again. We put his head on a spike as a warning. I wish we had done that already. Maybe Anya would still be alive. I'm not going to send these letters. I don't want you to see what I've become. I've got a new family to protect now. Some of them are as young as ours were. I don't remember anymore what it was like to be young. I'm so sorry, my love. I never wanted any of this. R.K. Grant that you never find me, that you believe me dead, too. It's better that way. Sooner or later, someone will end up making it true. Yours forever, Elsie. That one always gets me, guys. Raiden standing out here in the rain. I imagine him just, uh, let's pretend that he was somehow able to read that here. It's so dark. I have a torch or something like that. Oh, obviously, changes up, you know, the context of this victory. And I think that Raithen feels pretty complicated. I think that he doesn't really know what to think. And just, I don't know, one voice inside his head wants to say that, you know, they were bandits. And like she said in her letters, something was going to do them in eventually because they had a bounty on their heads and it was just a matter of time. But with that said, he's still sympathetic to what happened here and to their plight. And it's just left him not feeling very good. It's not hard to see some of his own parents struggle in what these people were going through. Definitely leaves him feeling conflicted. And that's just where we're going to leave it for now. This darkness is just impenetrable. <laughs> I can't see anything. And I have a torch. I don't have any. I thought I had lantern oil, but I guess not. Here's what we can do. I know she's fumbling around in the dark. How the hell do I get out of here? I can't even remember. It's going to say that I remember how to do it. Maybe the door is over here. I honestly cannot see anything. Oh, here we go. That's where I thought I was. Very dark. 
very dangerous footing. Jeez, I cannot imagine what this looks like for you guys. A giant's fire up on the hill. Shit. Like, we can't really even reliably, here we go, walk across the bridge, very careful. This dark, terrifying night. It almost feels appropriate. Like the world is crying for what happened here today. Raythan knows that he doesn't feel very good. Just looking for a bedroll. Cabbage. God, I can't see anything. Can I take one of these torches off the wall? No, I can't. Those are not made dynamic by the mod. Jeez, there's got to be, like, something around here. Someone has a torch, maybe. I'm just trying to find a better roll where we can pass the night. A lot of dead bandits. I'm not going to take anything yet, so I don't know. Or I get confused as to where, you know, which ones we've looted and which ones we haven't. I'm just looking for a... Do we have animal fat? I can use this cook pot. Ingredients. Yeah, we do. Do I have bottled water? Might have to console that for myself again. Cook saber cat meat. Because we should still have that bottle, right? The only reason I'm consoling myself that is because the bottle's consumed as well, which doesn't make any sense. Help bottled water. Player dot add item nine eight zero three D F E eight one. There we go. Flammable oil. There we go. There we are. Now we can actually see. Jesus. Raythan looks out over what he's done here. What we've done here. You know, up until now, we've been pretty non-discriminate killing bandits. And of course, there's been a personally motivated element for Raven getting stronger and, frankly, taking out the rage that he still has in his heart about everything that he's been through. The more he thinks about it, the harder it is to convince himself that he's still the good guy in this scenario. Oh, someone brought up in a comment. Can't sleep here. There we go. That Raythan's justification for raising the dead as he has been could be his mother's teachings about how the dead don't need their stuff anymore and you should feel fine going ahead going ahead and taking it and using it. I like to think that or this commenter said that the raising the dead could be seen as an extension of that, which I think is a really cool take. I think that should be his internal justification for doing something that is so kind of culturally uh, taboo. Got a nice level up. A lot of increased skill. Not bad. As we wake in this early, cold morning, it's time for us to have a spot of breakfast and to get looting. At least that way, they didn't completely die in vain. And they were bandits. They were killing people. They were also helping, in a way, as we saw, by securing the environment, keeping the bandits at White River Watch up on the hill. It's tricky. Let's go back downstairs to that cook pot. And then we'll start looting. A gloomy morning. Cold. Frigid. Cooked saber cat meat. Yes, please. And another. Get a nice cabbage. One more cooked saber cat meat. Wander down to the river. I don't have any. Oh no, I got plenty of drinks. 
How's the lighting? Can I disable my lantern? Eh, keep it on for a little while longer. We're gonna save too, just in case we get a crash or anything like that. God knows I don't want to have to do that again. God, that journal just gets me. It's so well done. Flawless Amethyst, Healing Poultice, Septum. We're also looking for a backpack, if we see any. Here she is. I'll see the spiker. Linen mourner's headscarf. Septums. Venison's too. Steel battle staff, first rate. Makes you wonder what this battle staff has seen. Bottled water, some septums, simple equipment. Clearly no one's rolling in it here. One of them had a gem that they managed to find. 16 lives taken. If not more. Red apple. Sure, why not? Septum. Pale bandolier. I think I can give that to Stenbar. Almost feel like I'm still here good use. in that context. There's like a brotherhood that's forming between them, especially now that they've both done this together. There's like a certain, you know, bond. To me, that's Stenbar saying that he's here and he's in it. Oh, sorry, got distracted. Let's see here. Leather bandolier. There it is. Nice. Is he carrying enough stuff? Let me know if there's anything else you need. I'll do, my friend. See, it just seems so like disrespectful, accidentally. God, so many bodies. Scroll of summon spirit wolf, fast healing, wooden staff of ice wind, petty soul gem. Empty skooma bottle. We've got drug users, too. I mean, it makes sense. It's not exactly a pleasant scenario they found themselves in. Healing poultice. Oh, here we go. Cabbage soup. Wooden staff of fire sparks. Not bad. Some septums. Seems we've got a trap here. Wonderful. Why is that text so small? There we go. Ugh. That's harder than I remember. Okay. To be fair, I haven't run a lockpicking character since Requiem's new expertise system. Boom. Nice. Pretty good. And a torch. We're going to carry that as a backup. Steel axe head. Enchanted, huh? One of these days, 
Wraithen might Thanks. dig more deeply into magical study. Maybe that's a more ethical way for him to gain the strength that he's looking for. I think this is the first time that since he's been here, he's been so preoccupied with getting stronger and just so angry at everything that happened to him and loss as a way of consuming you in that way, right? To where you only think about your own issues and you're just so distraught and you're so hurt and scared that it's hard to think about anyone or anything besides your own pain and you forget that there are other people out there who are hurting just as badly. And I think this is the first time that he's really having to grapple with the morality of his goal here. Other bandolier, gold ring, cooked meat. Stenovar just sitting down because he just needs a break to think about what they've done here. They've got a skooma barrel. Some potatoes. Some cheese. A lot of this stuff can be very useful for cooking. I'm going to go ahead and take them grab some of those bottled waters downstairs and see if we can't cook anything decent. Butter. Always good to have as well. It was a heavy episode. I think it's light enough to where we don't need this anymore. restore health what looks to be a bathroom. God, I hope people didn't need that for constipation or something of the sort. Wardrobe. Some simple boots. Was there anyone up here? I can't remember. Beautiful. Morbidly so. In the context. More death everywhere. I think there's another corpse down here. Yep. I remember to check that one. Bread. Here, flour. Use that to bake some stuff. Hide water skin. Bottled milk. I'll be selling most of this stuff if we don't use it. Skooma. Is this silver ore? Iron ore. We need iron ore, don't we? We have one of these ourselves, but I'll just drop this one afterwards. Oh, Stenvar, geez. Orvan is depleted. Super great weight versus value. Amulet of Mara. Oh. That could have been Elsie's and Harold's. Oof. Man, we are moving through these lockpicks fast, aren't we? 
other way. Right about there, I'd say. Oh. There it is. That ain't not bad. This must have been Elsie's room. Oh, an adept lock. I don't know if we can handle. Scale cloak. Oh, some of you mentioned in one of the previous episodes you didn't know why I picked up, or sorry, left behind on Warm Sands the cloak in Lost Knife Hideout. It might have been worth taking just because it's a unique item, but all of the enchantments from the unique cloaks have been removed, have been patched out because they are too powerful in Requiem. So at the very least, we didn't miss out on a powerful enchantment. Hunting Bow of Ice. Honestly, not value versus bad value versus wait. Whoa, what's going on there? Anything under the bed? Song of Pelinal. On his deeds. That's actually very interesting that this is here because for those of you who don't know, whoa, what is happening here? Pelinal White Strake or whatever his name is um, is a very, I don't really know that much about him. Um, so I don't want to spread misinformation, but he's a very polarizing figure in history who was, oh, yikes. Was a, Many people view him as like a genocider. He killed many, many, many people. I can't remember exactly what the scenario were, was. But I wouldn't be surprised if Elsie had that there because, I don't know, she's just grappling with her own guilt or felt some sort of parallel between herself and Pelinol. Really, it's not fair to compare her experience with his, but like, in her mind, you never know, you know? Okay. Um... Use one of these knock scrolls, because I don't necessarily... I want to start putting our perks into survivability, because we're still so... soft. Squishy. Oops. Otherwise, it would be tempting to try and... Well, I might not even have... Yeah, my lock picking is still five. Which seems low, but I guess we haven't picked that many. No, I don't think my sneak and my speech are very good right now because we're dirty. So I'm going to go ahead and try evasion. What do we have here? This is dodge. Not great. We're going to want... That's pretty cool. That'll be great for us to have. Practice endurance lessens the stamina required for light armor power attacks. This one's more damage. Running melee attacks are now stronger. So a lot of these are... The, the thing with evasion versus heavy armor is that it essentially makes you more effective as a damage dealer because you're supposed to dodge and not get hit really so survivability is tough block we can't really i don't want to go deeper into shield because the dual wielding would really fit we can try and get into that and start our dual wielding Adventure or fighting style. Restoration. Not great, any of these. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hold off for now and just, I mean, alchemy honestly could be useful too. We don't really have a, a support skill like that yet, but I'm gonna hold on to it. You resolve to continue pushing yourself. Perhaps there's more to you than you thought. Hmm. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and use one of our knock scrolls. Healing poultice. Potion to restore health. Still not great. Not the worst. And an inkwell. And I think that's it. That is Valheim Towers, everybody. It's time to return to Whiterun and talk to the companions and collect on our debt. However we feel about it, the job is done. 
can't remember if I checked this or not. I did. Sun's coming out. Nice clear day. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Ew, excuse me. Thank God I didn't walk off the bridge. I'm gonna go ahead and loot that corpse. That waterfall where she threw the first corpse off. Oh, you know what though? That kind of makes me wonder if that cave that we saw down by our campsite, if it's not a troll cave. And we don't have much here. Oh, bottled water is what we need. A couple of these bandits had some. Who was it? There we go, there's one. Nope. Elsie? Nope. Let's check our man down by the river. One of you guys, there was another one, I swear. Well, either way, we can see what sort of things we can make, because, of course, it still doesn't make sense for the bottles to disintegrate after they are. Like, what we can do, if we want, is pour these out. There's a roundabout way of doing it, is grabbing something like that, Village Red Wine, and what's it called? Opening up our crafting ledger and emptying it out. Oh, we can make apple cabbage stew now. It's not the best. Really nothing all that great, to be honest with you. Potato soup, Magicka regeneration, that would be nice. But I'm gonna go ahead and get an empty bottle. Empty out this village red wine. And we can fill it up down over here if we really wanted to, but I'm actually not going to. I don't even know why I bothered. So we can always just console ourselves another one, because that really doesn't make sense. This guy had one. Lennon Alakir boots. This is an interesting impact for Wraithen, because clearly this guy is not Alakir, so who did he take it from? Wraithen's people. Complicated. Get a nice, quick drink. Where is it? Here we go. And then, let's take a quick bath. Alright. Now, very quickly, we're gonna ride down the hill, pack up our Jesus. Pack up our campsite and we will be out of here. <whistles> Miss Lady, where you at? She's down over here. Beautiful day. Oh, here she comes. Which is strange. I'm sure it's a strange feeling for Raven. Surrounded by life and death. It's a weird one. Hopefully you guys don't mind this more somber episode. I feel like... My, oh, fog's rolling in. My usual... Thousand words a minute doesn't feel appropriate for this one, you know what I mean? I'm leaving this cooking pot because we still have one already. Pack up, please. Hmm. Man, fog's really rolling in. Well... Here we go. We got a fair amount of stuff to sell off. This is the cave that I was talking about, by the way. Oh, there's a rabbit there. Let's see if we can't get it real fast. I 
missed. Scared it off. Oh well, geez. This fog, not good for hunting. Shall we? Oh, excuse me. Sorry, Miss Lady. Inspired by the flame, that's a little odd. Fox. So, onward to Whiterun to turn in our bounty and also to turn in our quest to let the companions know that we've cleared out the lost knife hideout. I'm going to save it again in case we get a crash after the all the looting. It takes a long time to save for me because my folder is full of save files. I gotta go in there and clear some out. I have about a million of them. And I think from now on, as Wraithen moves out through the companions, you know, he thought he really wanted a bandit job. Like the one he got from Farkas. He was getting tired of these animal face-offs from Ayella. But now, the animal jobs seem preferable, in a way. At the very least, less morally gray, that's for sure. I don't know. I have to wonder if something... There's like two forces that are competing within Raythan's heart, right? The sympathetic kind boy. You know, he. I feel like to think that Raithen was a bit arrogant, a bit boisterous as the virile son, youthful son of two aristocratic soldiers in Tanith. You know, he was like royalty and he had a good life, good friends and had every reason to be happy. Developed a little bit of arrogance. But otherwise, had a good heart. And I think that side of him is currently... Hello? I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. What Looks is like that? Got to go. Oh, yeah, sure. Taxes on my horse. Wonderful. I think that kind empathetic side of him is at odds with the coldness that has developed as a result of his loss and his grief. That part of yourself that you kind of steal away when you're dealing with something like traumatic loss. I still don't know why that's happening. The part that you try to say is indifferent to the plight of others, you know, because you're in such pain. What difference does it make if other people are too? Or you can't even really gain the perspective to deal with other people's pain when you're so affected yourself. But of course, that's a trauma response. And I think that the other part of him still lives somewhere in there. But I think he's doing everything he can to suppress it as of now. Actually, you know what? Pardon me. Just let me double check to make sure that all the stuff that I have on Queen Alfsiger is not things that I want to sell. At the very least, I think I have that tribunal mask in there and I want to get rid of that. Hello, madam. What do you have? Dark sword. Raise dead, rank one. Still want to hold on to that. Holding on to those. This I want to sell. Carrot. You can keep... Oh. We're holding on to letters to Harold, by the way. Cooking pot, deadwood branches. Don't I have the... Yeah. All right. And these two. I don't think we need these. Whatever, who cares? They're so light. 
All right, I got all of our stuff to sell. I'll probably do that off camera. I'm gonna have to run pretty quick here. I think what I'm gonna do is go up and turn in my bounty and then go and talk to the companions and then we'll call that an episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I really have, to be honest. I think that this has been a really great episode for character development, for Raithen and Stenvar both. I think that it's given them a lot to think about, and I think that we also had some pretty fun action right in the beginning. I hope you guys agree. The rain today feels cold, colder than usual. Sees everyone scattering to try and stay out of the rain. walking around in civilization like this it's hard not to think about those bandits who weren't lucky enough to have a place like this to stay to have anything to eat and who on a night like this or sorry a, a day like this where the cold rain pours down they would have had to just be there just like Elsie said in her letters, there were so many cold nights in the rain. They certainly would have been able, wouldn't have been able to stay in a place like this. Hello, Preventus. I serve Jarl Balgrum as steward. The bandit leader at Falfheim Towers is dead. I'm here for the bounty. Excellent. You've done us a great service. Here is your reward. Thank you, Preventus. Oh, that's right. In Requiem, the at least this version, a lot of the bandit payout is. Wait a second, it shouldn't be that low still. Oh, we don't have bounty gold anymore. That's right. Well, I guess it is. I frankly feel like that was supposed to be a bit more, because the jewels are supposed to kind of help out. But these aren't really worth that much, to be honest with you. I might console us a bit more gold as a thank you there. Just because it's not really consummate with the challenge. F, what will we say? Maybe... 600, that way it's 300 for each of us. How about that? Does that seem fair to everybody? Hi, foreign guard. Dragons reach to discuss the ongoing hostilities, like the rest of the great warriors. Take a look. No, sir. I'm here to sell off some wooden staves. And what are the? Oh, amulet of Mara. Sure. Gold ring. Of course, silver ring, amethyst. Tribunal mask, gold. Looks fucking cool, though, doesn't it? And these as well. Major Deft Hands. Great enchantment. Not so great of a... Um, thing to have it on. Although, you know, that does make me want to use... Do you mind if I use your enchanting table? May I? Disenchant Hunting Bow of Ice. I think if we're going to go utility skills, maybe I want to get into... This skill for Raithen. So, you know what? Instead of selling this, pickpocketing, maybe. I don't really need pickpocketing, though. Lock picking, for sure. Well, maybe I'll sell these, but eminent smithing of ice, stamina damage. Nice. Hunting bow of ice. Oh, was that my dwarven thingy? Oh, well, that's fine. Get some enchanting skill. Elven hunting knife. Orcish heavy bow. Because I just, I plan, you know, just so you guys know, clearly Raithen's dance with undeath and souls and whatever, that's going to keep going. So I have a sneaking suspicion that he's going to get into some enchanting. Take a look. Now. Oh, am I not wearing my cloak? 
Got to put that on. You can go ahead and have that. Farangar. Sure. Gonna take that. And a petty soul gem. I think we're supposed to collect these. Can't remember. No, yeah, petties. They gotta be filled with souls, though. Commons. Raw rabbit leg. Black book. White ridge barrow. Got an iron ore. Your mind is the best weapon you have. Thanks, Farangar. Much appreciated, my friend. Hmm. Not getting any more work at the moment. I think Wraithen needs to decompress. See what the companions have to say. Maybe they have something for him. Kodlak White Mane is the harbinger of the companions. Does not give orders, but his word is highly respected, both inside Yorvaskar and through all the nine holds. Wow. How about that. Cold rain continues to pour down. Oh, a little bit of lag there. Time Skur. You can't say he's not dedicated. Out there every day. Even in the cold. All right, Farkas, where you at, my friend? Might be out in the training yard. It's about that time. Oh, geez, everyone hanging out here, huh? Skior says that I have the strength of Isgrimor, and my brother has his smarts. It's like they all... I don't think there's any idle markers out of character in this room. It's a problem with the ESF companions or something of that sort, so they all kind of congregate in one spot, taking care of the problem. I expected no less of you. And once again, you have not disappointed. Thank you very much, Farkas. Let's see what Ayala has to say. I've heard you may actually be stronger than you look. A citizen of Hjalmarch has asked for our help. It seems that a predator has invaded their home, and someone needs to clear the beast out. Do you know what kind of beast it is? A wolf, separated from its pack, or maybe it was driven out. I'll take it. Good. I knew that we could count on you. It's simply a beast, but be cautious. The beasts of Skyrim are made of sterner stuff than most. Sure. Well, hopefully we can still get stronger, although... We're facing an important crossroads here, right? Where... It's... There's no doubting that... Well, we'll go ahead and see. I have kind of some plans for how this will go, and I don't want to spoil them. So, in the next episode, we've got another job with the companions. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, as always. I really did. I hope that you did, too. And I will see you at the same time next week. Thank you so much for watching. Did you take a look at it?